Parker here with you, founder of Awakening Media, a Christian media company that's helping Christians get published, produce podcasts, deal with graphics and media of all sorts. I launched this company after working in the secular media industry for over 25 years, really 30 uh, if you count the very early days of my work assisting major photographers, okay? So I've been doing this a long, long time. I've worked in photography, videography. I've interned at Christian TV stations. And when I was younger, I did a lot of different things in secular media. Now I've launched a Christian media company looking for good authors, looking for uh, strong voices for podcasts. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about building your platform building your platform. Any publisher, any podcast network is going to be looking at your platform. So I want to share with you just a few tips on how I have gained over 400,000 Facebook fans. Many people with ministries much larger than mine do not have 400,000 Facebook fans. A lot of them that do have bought them. Okay, you can buy Facebook fans all day long, but they're not engaged fans. So one of the things I want to share with you straight off the bat is don't buy fans. Don't buy fans. You can buy fans like a hundred dollars for a thousand. Don't do that. I had someone try to talk me into doing that at one point. Uh, I was leaning in that direction. You know what? Those fans that you buy are fans that are going to leave you anyway. Don't buy fans. People are doing this on Instagram. They're doing it on Twitter. They're buying fans. This is not the way to go. First of all, it lacks a measure of integrity. Someone, like I said, talked me into trying that one time. I, I found that that was a, a, a wrong route altogether. Uh, and we, we, we did not find that to be a way of integrity. I want people to connect with me who want to connect with me. I don't want people to connect with me who are getting paid 10 cents on the dollar to connect with me. They're just going to leave. That's Facebook prostitution. Amen. And you need to cut it out. It does not do you any good. The whole point of a Facebook following is to minister to them, to engage them with your products and services, whether you are a business, a Christian business or a Christian uh, a church uh, or you to have a ministry, whatever it is you're doing, you want loyal followers and loyal followers are not paid followers. Okay. So the first thing not to do is don't buy Facebooks. Don't buy Facebook followers. Now, can you do a like campaign? I've not done one, but I'm not against like campaigns if they're targeting people who may be interested in your following. But I don't want to talk about all these paid strategies. I want to talk about organic Facebook followings. I built mine organically. It was organic. It was natural. You know, I eat organic foods. I use organic hair products. Praise God. I am an organic person. I think or relationships in the natural should be organic. And so, you know, would you buy a friend? Some people do that. They, they, they're so, listen, they're so full of rejection that they try to buy a friend. People on Facebook are so hungry to have the biggest following that they'll buy followers. These are not going to work for you. People are not going to buy your uh, products as a Christian business because you bought the fan. People are not going to go to your conferences because you bought the fan. You need to be organic. So what do you do? I'm going to give you just a few tips. And I have launched a school of media for Christians. Okay. None of this scam artist junk you see out there on Facebook promising this and promising that. A school of media, you can go to schoolofmedia.tv. We're going to be doing this in Atlanta, but you can also watch online. You can either go to awakeningmedia.com and see all the services, or you can go to schoolofmedia.tv and press in that way if you're an online student. Go sign up. We're going to be talking about photography. Uh, you know, most of church photography, it just looks bad, but it doesn't have to. You don't have to be a professional photographer to get good photos. You just need to know a few tricks. You just need some training. Videos, uh, graphics. My goodness, the Christian graphics world is, for the most part, looks like a two-year-old did. I don't mean to insult you if that's you. I know you're doing the best you can with what you have, but there are free tools out there, and there are a few tips and tricks that you could understand how to do this better. Social media, my goodness, protocols, come on, what to say, what not to say. But how did I get, so go to school of, schoolofmedia.tv or go to awakeningmedia.com. But how did I get these 400,000 Facebook fans? I did not buy them. 
I did a few things. I did more than these few things. But in the time that I have here, I'm going to share with you a few of the things I did that were really effective. Number one, know your audience. When I was building my Facebook presence, I was in an apostolic prophetic church. Everything I wrote was geared toward apostolic prophetic people. So I just understood from the get-go that those who are listening to my teachings, those who are listening and reading my articles, listening to my messages, were going to be apostolic prophetic people, spiritual warfare people. So I did not uh, try to be all things to all people. I understood that they wanted from me more of what they were getting from me already. I understood that they wanted more prophetic uh, words, more prophetic teaching, more prophetic training. Uh, I wanted to, they wanted me to to give them more of what they already like, not something you know way over here on the left. You know, someone's coming to you for apples, they're not coming to you for oranges. Okay, if they're coming to you for produce, they, yeah, all produce. But if you're known in your in your city, uh, you know, for apples, that's what people are coming to you for. You know, a doctor. You know, you don't go to a podiatrist. Uh, for an earache, you go to the to to the to the ENT, the ears, nose, throat specialist, for a earache. Okay, you don't go to an ENT for a sprained ankle like the one I have now. You go to a podiatrist for your sprained ankle, your broken ankle. So you know you have to know who your who your audience is and what they want from you, and, and what your specialty is, and what you can give them. So you start there. Not just anybody, I know this comes as a shock to you, but not just anybody wants to follow you, praise God. It's going to be a niche audience. It's going to be a, uh, you know, yeah, some Christians, they, they seem to attract everybody, okay? Okay, everybody follow, Everybody likes, maybe not everybody, but everybody likes Joyce Meyer. Everybody loves T.D. Jakes, okay? These, these, these are people who have crossed over into different realms, but for the most part, you're going to be known for one thing. Your business is going to be known for some specialty. Your ministry is going to be known for some specialty. You might have crossover, but you need to cater to that core audience if you want to build a loyal following and in the process, build your platform. This is one of the primary ways. This was step one of my understanding how or my getting to 400,000 followers. Number two, listen, content is king. But not just any content. Now, back in the listen, back in the early days of the internet, they had a saying, "Content is king." But what I've discovered, yes, content is king. Content drives the entire internet. But what I understand, really, at this point, and what you need to understand, is quality content is king. Quality content, not just any content. Quality content, intentional content, content that is going to meet a what they call in the book publishing realm a felt need. For your audience, quality content. So graphics matter. This goes back to graphics. Photographs matter. The stuff you're putting on Facebook, it, you know, your personal stuff is fine. But if you're trying to build a business following, if you're trying to build a ministry following, you need to have quality photos. And like again, you don't have to be a professional photographer or have fancy equipment to get quality photos. You can take great pictures with your iPhone or even an iPod. Look. Go to schoolofmedia.tv and find out how you can learn more about all this stuff. Quotes matter. Uh, the, your quote graphics matter. I see well-known ministers with quote graphics. And there's misspellings. You know, everybody has a typo now and again, okay? I've made typos. No condemnation. But there's misspellings. It's clunky. It's too close to the edge. They don't understand the rules of graphic artistry. And when you understand the basic rules... It immediately causes you to go way higher in the presentation of your graphics. It's just that nobody's told you, and you need hands-on training. Videos matter. Listen, even your Facebook Lives videos matter. You know, your, your video, you need to have good. I've got lights all around me right now. You know, every once in a while, I'll, I'll mess up, and it'll be too hot. I wear glasses. It's hard. They say too hot. That means too bright. Uh, I have this here in my home. Um, sometimes it'll be every once in a while it'll be too dark because the light shifts outside in the middle of the broadcast. I'll do something too close to dusk and not accommodate for that. So, you know, you don't have to be perfect, but you do need to strive for excellence. I'm surrounded now by one light on this side, one light on this side and one light straight in front of me. And I have backlighting. And if you'll look far in the back, you'll see a, a light shining up on the wall and another one to the back of me. So there's five lights for this setup and you're like, well, that's too much. Look, these things are cheap. They're not expensive, and they're not hard to use. You need hands-on instruction, schoolofmedia.tv. The videos matter. 
You know, you need to, some of you stop, you know, using Facebook live and start using uh, a B live or get a Mevo camera. Okay. We're going to go over this, all this in depth in the school of media. Now, number three, timing matters. The timing of your post matters. Now, the problem is, is you can go find an article on the internet about what's the best time to make my Facebook post. Eh, wrong. These things are changing so rapidly. The algorithms are changing so rapidly on Facebook and on Google that what worked yesterday may not work tomorrow. So in my school, I'm giving you a uh, foundational principle so that you can adjust when the market adjusts. Facebook changes its schemes all the time. And if you go with what you were taught two years ago and sometimes, sometimes even six months ago, then you're missing the mark you've got. I have to stay on top of all these things. I worked for as the editor of Charisma Magazine. I was there for eight years and I had to learn to shift. I grew their media, uh, their uh, social media. They had zero. Uh, now there's a couple hundred thousand on Charisma News. I left a year ago. I don't know where they are. Um, they had like 80,000 uh, follower uh, uh, hits on their website. I think it was 40,000 a month. Uh, at the height of when I was there, uh, it was it was millions. Okay, so I know how to grow a reach organically. You don't have to buy, 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 buy on Facebook. Now, that said... Facebook has become a bit of a pay for play. And so I do boost posts. I do engage in the game, but it's not necessary to spend thousands of dollars to increase your Facebook presence. Timing matters. You need to figure out the best time for you. Look and see which post did the best. Was it and figure out why? Was it the content? Was it the photo? Was it the time that you posted it? So go look at the analytics. We're going to go into this really deep in the school of media. Here's a couple questions people usually ask me, and I'm going to get off with this. Should you engage with fans? You'll read all over the place how you've got to engage with fans. You've got to engage. You've got to engage. You've got Joyce Meyer Ministry and other ministries have a people who just, that's their full-time job. They just post and they engage with fans. I don't typically engage with fans as much. Why? Because first of all, number one, I don't have the time. I don't have a full-time dedicated social media person. And, and also, it doesn't seem to be a make or break. I think it's great if you can engage with fans. If you've got the time to do that, do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying if you're bootstrapping and you don't have the time, well, then don't do it. it don't, don't make a law in legalism over how to build a Facebook page. When I'm telling you, I grew this to over 400,000. I don't engage with fans. Do I look to see what they're commenting? Sometimes I do. I'll scroll through the comments on a video and I'll check it out. And if there's something that needs to be addressed, I will. But for the most part, I'm not answering every query. I just don't have time. Don't let this be bondage to you. Don't let social media be bondage. Let it be a platform to release your voice, build your business. People ask, should I invite, should I invite people to like my page? I'm constantly getting invitations, like my page, like my page, like my page, like my page. You know, it's, it's better than groups because people just add you to their groups. It should be the opposite. They should have to ask you to join the group and they should be able to add you to their page. If you had to pick, you know, there are times when I invite people to like my page. For the most part, I don't. I did. I did that in the beginning. You need to, when you're first starting a page, you, you need to do that for a season. But, you know, most of the time people aren't even seeing the invite anyway. You know, I don't see most of the notifications I get on Facebook on a daily basis because I probably get thousands of them. And so I don't myself, but if you don't have that large of a presence, then maybe, maybe, and, and you're, you know, maybe you do, maybe, maybe you see the notifications, maybe others would see yours. Listen, there are principles that I'm trying to share with you, not hard and fast rules to the point that I'm saying always never. That's where I think people, they become experts and they try to tell you, you have to do it this way. Well, if that's not working for you, then that's putting you in bondage and that's keeping you doing things that don't work for you. I'm sharing principles that have worked for me and I'm telling you, check it out. Test everything. Kind of like prophecy. Test the spirits. Test everything. Stick with us what's good. Should you market your page? Like campaigns. And I worked for ministries that did like campaigns. And as I said in the beginning, I'm not against that. Um, if you're targeting people who have the interest that your page is trying to attract. Um, but again, it's not necessary. You might do it to give yourself a boost, but not necessary. So I want to share so much more with you. We have three days of teaching in Atlanta. It's not just myself. It's other experts. And you can come in Atlanta. You can register uh, to come live if you really want you know, to, to just put your hands on the stuff. Or uh, you can come through online viewership. Go to schoolofmedia.tv and sign up. Schoolofmedia.tv and sign up. Schoolofmedia.tv 
and sign up. If you're if you're a, an author and you're looking for media coaching, you're looking for your you just uh, if you're looking for a big break in your publishing realm, you know I might be able to help you with that. We do coaching services for all sorts of media, as well as uh, a, a, a special inline uh, to book publishers. So go to awakeningmedia.com. You can find the School of Media there at awakeningmedia.com. Awakening Podcast Network is launching soon, and we are looking for cutting-edge voices to be part of that, awakeningmedia.com. We also have awakeningmag.com, awakeningmag.com, looking for writers for that. And finally, I've got the Company of Scribes, which is a network of scribes, writers, authors. Go check that out at ignitenow.org. Listen, get involved in what blesses you. Get involved in what is going to help you. This class right now, the School of Media right now, is only $300. That is nothing for what you're going to get. It doubles in about a week. I think it's less than a week. It doubles in price. The first 50 people that sign up are going to get a $10,000 mobile app for $1,000 for life. So you've probably stopped listening as soon as I began to make the pitch. That's what most people do. But if you're still hanging on, the first 50 people, and there's a few slots left in that, you can go sign up now. You're going to get all kinds of bonuses, and you're going to get that $10,000 mobile app for only $1,000 through my partnership with a Christian app development company. Amen? Do this for your church. Do it for your ministry. Your media reputation needs to be one of excellence. I've worked in the media field for 30 years and I've seen all kinds. Now I'm in the church world still trying to take the media mountain. Our media needs to be good as the world because lives really could depend on it. I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for a spirit of excellence on everything we put our hands to even and especially our media. God, stir in us a hunger to present your gospel rightly uh, with proper graphics, proper videos, proper media, proper websites. God, help us, Lord, to do better, to understand how important it is. And I just released an anointing over you, a scribe anointing. That's what I'm hearing. I want to say a scribe anointing to write like the wind. Look, I'm looking for a few good writers. Reach out to me, awakeningmedia.com, School of Media. TV. I bless you in the name of the Lord.